19 years, 11 months, 364 days later. I know every other person, every other guardian angel who helped save my life that day. I don't know who that firefighter is. The morning of September 11th, I was a photographer for the New York Daily News. I was heading down to teach that morning at NYU. So I was sitting in my car, minding my own business, when all of a sudden the police and fire radio started screaming, a plane's hit the World Trade Center and it's on fire. I was about a mile and a half north of the Trade Center. I looked up and saw the hole in the side of the building and went right down there. It was utter chaos, but very quiet. The city that's known for all its noise was almost silent, like somebody had hit the mute button. People were coming in and just standing there and staring, looking up in utter disbelief. There was no real plan. As a news photographer, um, you have to look for the best angle, you have to disregard your personal safety, and you have to make sure that you tell the story truthfully of what's happening there. I got there after the first plane had hit, but before the second tower was hit. I was standing in front of the south tower when the second plane plowed into the building. I knew it was slightly dangerous, but had a real need to keep recording history. Uh, walked around the west side of the building, photographed people fleeing for their lives, rescue workers, firefighters, paramedics, just kept on walking around looking, snapping the shutter, capturing moments, when all of a sudden heard this loud rumbling noise and looked up and saw the tower starting to disintegrate in slow motion. My initial reaction was to take a photograph, but a voice in the back of my head said, run, run, run. And for the first time in my career, I actually ran away from an assignment. I was running down West Street when I got picked up by a tornado of darkness, of building parts, of, um, of broken glass and debris, and I was tossed about half a city block. I was buried alive. My mouth and my nose were filled with that choking dust and I thought I was gonna die face down in the gutter of New York City. I managed to clear my mouth and nose and started calling for help and heard um, words that I'll never forget. Don't worry, brother, we'll get you out. Firefighters call each other brother and it was the first group of rescuers that I found that morning. It was Lieutenant Tom McGough from Engine 217 in Brooklyn and his crew and they dug me out of whatever I was buried underneath, but left me there. They had lost two of their firefighters in the collapse, and they were hoping to find them. Another crew of firefighters, Phil McArdle and Jeff Perkowski from Engine 288 in Queens, found me lying out on the street, picked me up, and carried me back towards Battery Park City, towards the delicatessen. They put me on the floor there, and that's when the second tower collapsed. A police officer named Jim Kelleher threw himself on top of me while I was lying on the floor because there was a plate glass window in the deli that he was convinced was going to shatter from the impact of the second collapse. But without any regard to his safety, protected me when I was the most vulnerable. After that cloud subsided from the second collapse, Jim Kelleher and EMS paramedic chief Charlie Wells picked me up and started carrying me to safety. They were joined by a firefighter. He might be a New York City firefighter. He might be a volunteer firefighter who came in and grabbed a coat. It might have been his personal equipment that he kept in a car. But 19 years, 11 months, 364 days later, I don't know who that firefighter is. I'd love to hug him. I'd love to say thank you. I hope he's safe. I hope he's alive. But I think I, I know every other person, every other guardian angel who helped save my life that day. Who is this guy? Where is he? 
I'm very lucky to be alive. I was very badly injured. It took nine months to learn how to walk again, but um, I, I'm one of the fortunate ones. Um, there are so many other families who would give anything to have their loved one back, broken or otherwise. This photo has been out there. It's been circulated. It went to the firefighters union. It went to the fire department. It went to the fire officers union. It's been out there on the internet. And I've made it a point to meet up with and hug and cry and remember and talk with every other person who I'm aware of who helped me out. Terry Tobin was a police captain at the time and she held my hand in the ambulance going to the hospital and called my family and told them that I was alive. And we talk on a regular basis. Every single rescuer I'm still in touch with. Where is this firefighter?